Okay, gamers, rise, gamers, arise. So the other day I finished the Resident Evil 4 remake and almost immediately started over on professional and I just can't stop thinking about it. I can't stop playing it. I felt like I just needed to talk about it. So I'm gonna just set a timer for 45 minutes and just talk about Resident Evil 4 and we'll see what happens. The original Resident Evil 4 is like one of my favorite games ever, much like a lot of other people because it's lightning in a bottle. And if I feel like even if you didn't play it at the time it came out where it was super genre defining, everyone always talks about like Gears of War, Uncharted, like third person shooters just wouldn't exist without Resident Evil 4, which is true, but like, like Eddie, Eddie Burback, you know, friend of the channel, friend of the, the man in real life. He didn't play the original Resident Evil 4 until like a few years ago, but it still held the test of time over those games it inspired because it was just that good, I guess is what I'm trying to say by the whole lightning in a bottle thing. I remember the first time I saw it, my friend Terry had it on the original GameCube and he was playing it on a CRT, you know, GameCube style. And just like the forced widescreen, which was, I don't know if any game was doing that at the time and the, the like letterbox bars added to this cinematic feel. It wasn't just a gimmick either, like it was needed and earned because of like the field of view for aiming and just like the stop and pop gameplay and shit. It also was just masterclass in just pacing and like atmosphere and feel. Like even just watching this video right now when he's about to free the dog, that opening village just feels so I don't know, part of it is probably nostalgia. It, it feels like a place that you've like been. And just when you think that you've seen everything, you haven't seen everything. And also the gameplay and the game feel is just so old school Nintendo levels of tightness. And even with the awkward, like you're moving and you're aiming with one stick, at least on the GameCube, like after you play it for a little bit, it still feels really intuitive. And once you get back into it, you're like, oh yeah, like these micro adjustments, you're even seeing them turn around right now. But going back to Eddie, not even having played it till like a few years ago and just being blown away by it and being like, oh my God, it is so good. It's just, it's a testament to how beloved and amazing this game is that if you look at like any top 10 games ever made or top 20 games ever made or whatever it's probably on there and i love this part that only after you've gone through the initial combat with like the couple guys then hannigan calls and she's like oh by the way here's the controls hey we respect your intelligence and we trust that you're gonna figure some stuff out and then you go through that initial combat thing and then you know if you've never played it before you don't know that shit's about to hit the fan in the village which is like such a famous moment now everything i'm trying to say is that the original resident evil 4 is an amazing game with an especially amazing opening that just again going back to the lightning in a bottle thing it got so many things right for game design trends at the time, while also setting the trail for the future that even the own series couldn't follow or top with Resident Evil 5 and 6. But I feel like it was important to talk about the OG first, whether you've played it or not, just to kind of set the stage of where me, and I feel like a lot of people where our heart, head, uh, spinal cords were at when they announced that they were going to remake for because me and a lot of other people whatever i was saying about spinal cords we were hesitant about the announcement for a remake of resident evil 4 even though the remake of resident evil 2 is amazing in so many ways and how they adapted the old gameplay into new and keeping what's like memorable but also changing a lot of things because the game is fundamentally different 2 is like a masterpiece in a lot of ways. And it, I think everyone responsible for the design choices and everything should be given a fucking uh, Cinnabon. But the remake for three uh, that I briefly played on stream, one of the few times I've been live on Twitch, the remake for three is pretty bad, not because it's poorly made. It's, it's you know, it's, it's gorgeous. The character models have never been fucking more beautiful. The game feels good. It's, you know, you reuse a lot of the same locations as two, like all the pieces are there, but as someone that loved uh, watching my friend Cameron play Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, the original one, they just missed so much of what made that game special. Not even just, you know, 
changing the nemesis encounters to where it's these kind of stupid boss fights that are so weirdly paced but they straight up like cut out sections of the game and just you know i see what they were trying to do based on the original because two was more survival horror and then three got a little bit more action when they added this like dodge move and they did the same thing with this where this got more action focused versus the remake of two but it wasn't capcom at their at their peak as opposed to the two remake which was really disappointing especially because they sold it for 60 dollars and it's even on a first playthrough it's so short it's like you could probably beat it in i don't know like four or five hours if i remember right and that it did come with this like tacked on multiplayer thing but i don't know if it was anything special i i didn't try it maybe it was cool i shouldn't write it off if i've never played it but anyways especially after how this remake of three you know turned out nemesis swan diving into the river bitch um can't even swim. <clears throat> bitch can't even swim when they announced resident evil 4 remake obviously when this gets announced like they know what they're doing of hyping people up like they know everyone's favorite is resident evil 4 it's like you hear the spanish music you see the forest that you know we're all shit in our pants obviously gonna be excited obviously gonna play it when it comes out but pretty hesitant after the remake of three just cutting a lot of corners and just being pretty subpar. I think that for uh, most of the time leading up to the release of Remake 4, I had kind of forgotten about it and I was focused on playing other games, but also mostly because 4 is on every platform and it's not something where it's like you can't, you know, it's hard to access like, I don't know, like Conker's Bad Fur Day or something like that, you know. Then I played this demo and then I played it again and again and again and again and i was like oh shit like for the first time since the lead up for remake 4 i was like oh fuck they're they they might do this like they might not cut the corners they might do the full game at the very least like what they showed here with the animations and the character models and his fucking his coat looks so good and you already know I'm Matthew Perry. I play all the fucking Souls games. I loved Sekiro. Like, I love parrying in any game. I don't know what it is. My goblin brain is just like, oh, I can have a defensive option that I have to perfectly time, like it's a rhythm game or something. I just, it's such an easy way to get me to like your game. They add a parry to like my favorite game. I'm in. Watching videos on Twitter of people just doing the most fucking sick shit of like someone comes to grab them and they duck because you can do that. Like you get, you have that defensive option and like someone throws an ax and you parry it. I loved the demo and it was making me feel these things that the original made me feel the first time I played the original on Terry's GameCube and I was like, oh, god damn. Suddenly I am like counting down the hours till I can play this game and let me tell you you could tell I'm really excited Holy shit it delivered. I played it on PC on my ultra wide monitor and it just looked and played beautiful and I it was all I wanted to do and it was like the first time in a long time that I stayed up till like 5 or 6 a.m. because I was just like okay just one more thing just one more thing and I was playing on the hardcore difficulty because they're like this is the one that's recommended for people that have played Resident Evil 4 and dude it is not easy at least for me thank god i was playing on mouse and keyboard because being able to hit all those crucial shots on oh this fucking flaming cow it's hard for me to even find the right words and specifically like break down why this game is so good like i can try the sound design is just amazing not even just the inventory sounds and the stuff that capcom always nails but just like the guns and that paired with the animations of the guns, like the starting shotgun, I think about all the time of like, you know, it felt so good in the original, the way Leon like, you know, I'm such a sucker for that. And this like the click clack of how like, you know, he freaking loads another, I don't I don't even know why I'm starting by talking about that, but just like all of those fine details, it, it's back to the level of care that they had for the remake of two and then some. I seriously think that remake three being kind of a dud is i was talking about this with my friend hunter and i agree with him he was saying this that the, the remake of three being kind of a dud was maybe a blessing in disguise because like it feels like the fire was under their ass with this one and it's so hard for me to find stuff to actually criticize that the, the stuff that i have in my mind or that is you know i have written down on some notes here it's it's almost not even worth mentioning it's like it's stupid stuff like you know the fact that the a lot of the barrels and things that they have like ugly yellow paint on them but also it's like 
In the GameCube original, actual objects in the world that you can interact with are really easy to make out because they stood out because that's, you know, that's how it was. But in this, I get why they did something like that. So you could clearly tell, like, I can interact with this, I can't. But sometimes, you know, it might look a little tacky. Another thing that I also, even when criticizing it, I understand why they didn't do it is the fact that you can't put a laser sight on all of the weapons. You can only do it on two of the pistols, which largely informed which pistols I was gonna stick with because I love the laser sight. But even that, like I get why they didn't stick with that because like not every gun would have a laser. Not every, you know, they have individual reticles for the different types of guns. And I actually grew to like that. Even while talking about it, I mean, especially while talking about it and looking at it, like I just wanna go play it right now. I don't understand how they have recapture not only that lightning in a bottle feeling it's not even that they they captured that again because they just did it again and did everything the same because they didn't do everything the same there's so many things that are not even just the obvious stuff that's different but there's so many subtle things that are different and there's such a level of care and like mastery in game design with this game and lo and behold looking at the wikipedia stuff it seems like a lot of the same team that worked on the remake of 2 and it shows because this is the best resident evil game ever made that i like to play i think the ones that i like to watch the first one on gamecube i think is one of the most beautiful games and i don't really care to play it because it's pretty obtuse but i love watching people play that game and it has such a good atmosphere and everything but it, it reminds me of playing and this is like super high praise but it reminds me of recent memory of playing like breath of the wild or like elden ring that like while you're playing it you're having the frequent conscious thought of this like i'm experiencing like a moment and it sounds so dramatic but like a moment in gaming like this is something special i think a lot of people are experiencing that based on my youtube feed and twitter and stuff that it's like whether you played it when it originally came out and you're coming back or you're brand new to it i almost had as much fun playing it as i did watching my girlfriend billy play it because she never played the originals it was such a joy to watch her not even just the game design stuff of the actual combat and the different things you can do which i was rambling about before the performances of leon and Ashley in the merch. Dude, Ashley is so much better than the original. Like she feels, it's still cheesy, it's still campy, it's still this like, oh, damsel in distress, kind of, but like, she sucked in the original. <laughs> like, I don't even mean I'm like, Leon, help, like, but I just mean her, her writing, her character, feels a lot more like a real person and not just this like, dumbass that is <laughs> always screaming for you, you know? I really like their new, uh models for leon and ashley and Luis and everyone's super hot like ada holy shit Ev everyone is super hot especially ada but like i love the original performances of leon and the merchant who apparently were voice acted by the same guy in the original which i had no idea that's super impressive but like the what are you buying got a selection of good things on sale straight like he you know he had this specific iconic like raspy i don't even know how to describe it his accent whatever that even something like the merchant going into the game and even being super excited about it i was like oh the merchant will probably be fine they'll probably have some new it's better i don't even know how they, they like made him way more cock cockney cock yeah cockney like the lines that he has and it's i just I can't wrap my head around how so many things went right. Not only did they capture all of the same lightning and throw it in that bottle for the general game design, but even the tiny things that people really remember and love, you know, different things I don't want to spoil of like key moments, like how they have flipped them or made them better or just, I just want to go play it. I'm looking at my list of other stuff I wanted to talk about. It's just good. I'm, that might not be super insightful or interesting, but like it is not only the best Resident Evil game to play, I think, hands down, period. I think it's one of the best games. Oh, there's my alarm. That's, that's a good, <laughs> that means I've been talking for like 45 minutes. I think it's one of the best games ever. All I want to do is play it. All I want to do is talk about it. I just tell everyone to play it. One thing that is worth mentioning though that's pretty disappointing is that they, Capcom has made essentially a perfect video game or as close to perfect as you might get with these little, you know, small, small claims, court, small qualms uh, here and there. They did sneakily add 
microtransactions, not into the game itself, thank God, that, you know, there's not a prompt while you're at the merchant that's like, hey, you want to buy an exclusive upgrade ticket? But if you go to the game store page on PlayStation or Steam or whatever, you can pay real money to get the exclusive upgrade cards needed to, like, fully max out a weapon uh, with real money that's, like, $3 a piece, and they just added that without announcing it or anything when they did the free update for the mercenaries. It's weird because that doesn't directly affect the quality of the game because thankfully they didn't put any of those prompts in the game, but it's it does suck and it is sus how they did that and that I really don't like that and it it makes me feel a tiny bit less stoked on the game. I would say that is another one of the complaints, but again, it's not even really a complaint on the game. It's just a complaint on the business practices of Capcom wanting to do that. And that's, I don't like that. And that uh, unfortunately follows a trend in modern gaming that hopefully doesn't grow with future entries of Resident Evil, but I think like the whole games industry, it's not going away anytime soon. Anyways, that's my, uh, that's my TED talk. I hope that any of that was even a little bit like insightful or interesting and I already know I'm gonna have to edit like a billion things out because I just rambled on forever but um let me know what you what you think of this sort of format of you know just chilling talking about stuff very unscripted and slapped together because uh I don't think I could ever do a podcast just because I, I can't dedicate myself to that and you know that schedule and mental health and things like that don't have to get into that but this type of thing and why I kind of started Jaquan uh or why Jaquan started it, not me. Uh, and the first place was to just do stuff like this. And I, I could talk about video games forever, all the time, especially when there's one like this that I just love so, 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 so much. Let me know what you think in the comments about me, the channel, the video, the game itself. Let me know, you know, if, are you, you getting, you getting as sucked off as I am? Because like, I think I've made it abundantly clear in this video how much I love this game. But anyways, I'm probably going to go play it now. But uh, I hope, hope you're all uh, getting headshots and suplexes and pile drivers and, and uh, Spyro Skylanders figures. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later.